<laughs> Indeed, welcome back. We are talking about Kenya export and imports. Yes, does it benefit the economy? Does it boost our economy? Or is, does it just boost other countries' economy by in exporting to our country? And also, we are trying to figure out... Um, is the imports proportioned to the export or is there any deficit and how can we cap up that deficit? Yes, to help me discuss this is our in our in our studio tonight is our guest Brian Way there. Karibu Sana Brian to the studio. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Feel at home. Thank you. Remember, you can be part of this conversation using Y254 updates or Y updates, or you can tweet me directly at Miriam and School Massava. You can send in your questions or your feedback. I'll be happy to sample some of them during the show. But first, just let's, let us just jump into the questions tonight, the discussion tonight. Because last week we saw President Huru Kenyatta, right? Mm -hmm. he went to Russia. Yeah. And he came back bearing gifts. The trade ties, the Russia Kenya Business Board Council, you expect the trade to be enhanced between these two countries because yeah, currently we have a trade deficit of billion of dollars. Yeah, true. Yeah. So I don't know, I don't know, does it, will it bear any fruit or is it just one of those agreements the president signs? Uh, I think it will be a benefits for us as a country because if you look at uh, the Russia Kenya relations, mm -hmm. The president has been pursuing them right from 2017 when he was invited for the Belt and Road Initiative in China. That is the first time Mr. Uhuru and President Putin, they met and that's the first time they had the conversation about improving the relations between Kenya and Russia. So I believe this was not just a normal agreement. It was something that is meant to actualize. Yeah. Well, okay, l l let me take you back a little bit because mm as much as we're signing this agreement, we also we need to export our products as well. Yeah, true. There is, there is production of tea, coffee, mm -hmm. but we've seen a lot of, a lot of, those of this production going down, or is it oversupply of the market? Do you think we produce enough to export? And how is our production so far in 2019? I think uh, we, we do produce enough for export mm -hmm. because now the capacity that you produce your product is dependent with the available market. Sure. So if, if we can be able to get a, a wider market, definitely you're going to expand our, our supply, our, our production capacity. Mm -hmm. So the current rate at which you have been producing, it is, uh, uh, it is coherent with the available market. So if we get uh, an extra market in Russia, definitely our production is going to increase. But you know Kenya is the second largest, I think, second largest exporter to, to Russia, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yes. And, uh, Oversupply, we've had oversupply of tea. You've seen KTDA going through some wrangles the past few weeks yeah. we, with this oversupply of flowers. To an extent, even the flower company Finlay closing down, which is expected to close down, I think, in December 25th, and the employees are rendered jobless. Ah, as in, because they say there's oversupply of these products in the European markets, which leads to job losses. So should we scout for other markets? Because it's the European markets where mostly we export these flowers and tea. Should we scout for other markets to, exp to export these products? I think if we, we, are, we have been having an oversupply in Europe, mm -hmm. actually Europe has been our main market for horticulture and mm -hmm. agricultural products. Mm -hmm. So I think then approaching Russia and any other market is a good initiative because we are, we are now trying to escape where there have been an oversupply and looking for a, a better market whereby now we can take this overflow of, of production. And so we should scout for other markets, yeah. apart from Russia, Europe, and China. <laughs> How do we compete in the international markets, surely? Because there is oversupply. You need to, well, other countries will also be thinking about, let us also move to other countries apart from Europe, mm -hmm. yes, and China and Russia. Let us move to other, let us move to America, let us move to other continents as well. How do you compete? How do you compete to this market? Uh, I think in, in international trade, there is this uh, idea of competitive advantage, mm -hmm. whereby you may have Kenya and the likes of Sri Lanka mm -hmm. or even China producing tea. And even Russia produces some amount of tea, although to a small quantity. So, but each country focuses on its own at competitive advantage, whereby you, may, you find that Kenya has, uh, I think, the best quality of tea, for, uh, or it's second to Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. So I think we do compete 
based on our agriculture by improving our quality, the quality of our products. So our competition in the market has been good. And that is why our, our agricultural exports have, have always been high. Okay, that's an advantage. Mm -hmm. It is good, it is high, but other countries are also coming up with good mm -hmm. <laughs> and high things, you know, and yeah, high true. production, which is very true. So do we need marketing strategies? I think what we need right now is diversification. Mm -hmm. We stop looking at how we're going to increase our agricultural exports and we look at how we're going to export more, more services. Mm. Because now the current economy in the world is now moving into, into services. And actually, if you look at, at the agreement uh, from the recent visit by our president, mm -hmm. nowhere is he looking at, at agriculture. He is, he is looking at the general trade, energy, uh, culture, mm -hmm. tourism, mm -hmm. because now the government has realized that if, if we continue dwelling on agriculture, mm -hmm. then we are not going to, to increase our, our exports. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's time we focus on other things. Mm. including inviting those countries to, inv to invest in our, in, in our country. Mm. <coughs> and also we, our export to East Africa has been declining as well. Yeah, because East Africa is, all, is largely agricultural based. Mm -hmm. So now if you're producing tea here, there's another tea, tea produced <laughs> in, in Uganda. Uganda. So now <laughs> and there's maize going? in Tanzania. Exactly. So Where will you export? <laughs> so I think that, that is one of the reasons as to why our exports to the EEC has been declining. Mm. Because now each, each of us is having his own similar products. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you say the president is, a, is, a, is actually encouraging Russia to invest in Kenya through the energy and scholarships and all that. Yeah. What else can Kenya sell? We can sell the labor. <laughs> we can sell labor. Because now you find that this, these countries, they, they have been having a, a decline in mm. population growth. And in the current economy, when, when you're having a, a decline in labor growth, it's a threat to the economic growth in general. And therefore, as Africa, it's, a, it's upon us to focus on improving our skills and our, and our human capital so that we can now attract them to use our labor to make their production the, like the way China did in India. Mm -hmm. So now, because you have realized that you don't have the capacity to create more jobs at your, it's kind of like our economy is saturated. Now let's, let's, let's invite those who have more, more capacity to use our labor. Yes. Yeah. Apart from labor, uh, labor and other things, how mm -hmm. can we make our production and our services more competitive for them to actually take our labor services? Mm -hmm. How do we make it competitive? Competitive. I, I, I believe uh, we, we haven't focused much on services. Mm -hmm. And therefore, before we get to the point of making them more competitive, it's about we, we innovate. Our um, economic complexity has been very low. It, uh, we are 86th in the world in terms of economic co complexity and the concept of economic complexity is based on the availability of information mm -hmm. and how that information is, is being transferred into economic activity. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we first of all have to focus on improving our economy by availing information and making sure that that information has been transferred in, into the economy through uh, creation of new services. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when you have new services, now then you can focus on how to make them more competitive. You can make them more competitive. <coughs> let, us, let me just take you back mm -hmm. to the tea. You've, you've had tea wrangles and people making laws, people losing their jobs yeah. in the tea industry as mm -hmm. well as the hot culture. Mm -hmm. How can we make this product attractive? I don't know, how do we, how do we just def, de diversify these products for, for them, mm -hmm. for us to be able to actually sell and improve the economy, and even improve the, farm, the farmer's life. Because I know there are farmers who depend on this. So I think the, the fact that uh, tea, tea sales ha, ha, have declined over the, the, the last year doesn't necessarily mean that we have a problem as a country. Yes. Because international trade has been really down mm -hmm. over the last year. It's not about mm -hmm. Kenya alone. It is, has, has been trade as, in general. And therefore, the decline in, uh, in the tea export in 2018 mm -hmm. may have been as a result of the decline in general international trade. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily mean that we, uh, our quality has gone down. Okay. So therefore it's about uh, waiting for the geopolitical state of the world to stabilize and now trade is going to boom again. To, to be normal again. Yeah. But we've seen something that is very interesting about this country mm -hmm. is how we produce our coffee, export it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then import it as refined coffee. <laughs> Why can't we produce our own coffee instead of exporting it as raw coffee? 
uh, in international trade, you realize that it's a give and take. For example, uh, our second export commodity is refined petroleum. Mm. But our major import is refined petroleum. So you wonder, how, how, how are we exporting refined petroleum and then importing it again? Yeah. It's because, uh, even, even Russia, they'll buy tea from Kenya. And you may find them selling some more. For example, uh, we, we import wheat, yet we, uh, we export some wheat. <laughs> so yeah. uh, it's about give and take. Mm -hmm. So you, you produce this amount and you give it to, to, to other countries who have better technology mm -hmm. and let them uh, manufacture it and refine it and then you buy it. That's how trade is built. Yes. When it comes to international markets, my thinking is that the Ministry of Trade, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs should be at the forefront fighting for the common, uh, common businessman uh, to, to just to ensure that they actually access this market. Mm -hmm. But well, my question is, is there enough support for this trader? I think uh, presently there, are, there may, no, may not be enough support, but going forward i think there'll be enough support mm -hmm. the government has realized that we have been having a, a policy challenge mm -hmm. whereby we haven't been having policy to attract foreign investments and therefore in the recent past the government has been focusing on refining our policy mm -hmm. to make sure that kenya is uh, attractive to other countries and therefore grow our, our trade mm -hmm. for example uh, the government is looking up to it introducing a holistic policy in terms of investor attraction. Previously, you find that governments focus on attracting investors. But when they land in our country, you leave them not to do business, mm. which uh, in the current uh, service forecast, customer service, doesn't work. So you have, uh, after um, attracting them, you have to give them a better environment so that they are going to stay. Mm -hmm. Not that someone comes, invests in your country for one year, and then the second year they're out. You, ha you have to allow them to come and make the environment as suitable so that they can stay for longer. <laughs> for two decades, 50 <laughs> decades, like the likes of Del Monte. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can actually access the market. Let me, let me ask you, is this trade tag really benefiting? Very beneficial. It's very beneficial. beneficial. Yeah, very beneficial for us. For example, uh, over the last two years, since the last election, mm. our government has been, I would call it, obsessed with the Big Four agenda. And therefore, and if you look at the, the, the key points of the Big Four agenda, which mm. are food security, affordable health care, mm. uh, manufacturing, and affordable housing, we do not have as a country uh, enough mm. domestic ability mm. to actualize the Big Four. And, th and that is why everywhere our president has been going, mm. he's been drumming up support for other countries to come and support us. Mm. And therefore, I believe Russia is, is in a position to assist us in uh, actualizing some of those uh, points. For example, manufacturing. Russia is a, is a, a giant in the manufacturing sector. Mm. And so they, they, they're in a better position to help us achieve that goal. Number two, when you have a, a better tie with, uh, with Russia, we stand to, to benefit in terms of uh, scholarships. In, uh, in science and technology, mm. Russia is a, is a giant. It's not the best, but they mm. are among the top. And therefore, they, we, we are in a better position to receive scholarships for our, for our country people, and therefore we're going to have better scientists in future. Mm -hmm. And again, we realize that the hydroelectric power that we have been relying on as a country mm -hmm. isn't, is insufficient. The reason for which our government has been aiming at introducing nuclear power. And Russia is among the best. I think, if not number two, it is number, number one. one. Yeah. So I think there's a lot to benefit from these ties, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Okay, from my thinking and what we have observed in the market right now, the trade ties, it only leads to other countries in exporting to us as we import more than what we export. For instance, let's take for instance China. Mm -hmm. Have you ever gone, let me just tell you, have you ever gone to Lithuli? Yeah. Made in China, made in China, made in China. Mm -hmm. There is no made in Kenya or, or made on whatever. It's, it's just made in Kenya. Does this tie lead to more of import than export? I think, I think uh, for, for uh, an agreement to result to the, to the now the effect of China, mm. what you're having right now, mm. is not a problem with the tie. It's a problem with policy. policy. The government hasn't defined what, after you come to Kenya as a foreigner, what are your limits? What can you do and what can't you do? Okay. And therefore, we cannot uh, limit ourselves from getting more agreements with other countries. Because now what we, uh, the ones we are having, 
have been maybe eating our people. So we, we, it's, it's better for us to continue seeking more, uh, more variety of ties we get from the United States, we get from the EU, the UK, India, Japan, and China, and any other. Mm -hmm. And now when they come, we define our policy mm -hmm. to make sure that we benefit from, this, uh, from these ties. Okay. So therefore, seeking more ties is a, is a good idea. Okay. Yeah. So you say ties is a good idea and mm -hmm. policy. Yeah. Final comment as we end the show. So I believe uh, the current initiative that, that, that our government is making of seeking to introduce a holistic policy, mm. investment policy, is a brilliant one. Because now previously we've been having uh, I mean investment policies mm. that have been conflicting. And therefore you find that someone, uh, an investor has come to invest in our country, but then the environment is, is so hostile and so they leave. That's why we, we, we've been having uh, even franchises and foreign companies closing down. Yeah. So I think the, the, the initiative of first of all streamlining the policy is a brilliant one and it's going to help us. In fact, the moment the policy is, uh, is, is fine-tuned, we, we won't be having to go to other countries to beg them to invest. Mm -hmm. It will be now uh, it's like a magnet, mm -hmm. inviting, uh, attracting them to invest in our country. Well, thank you so much, Brian Wethera. Thank you so much. That was Brian Wethera, our economic analyst. Yes, and that's all we had for you here on Y254 Business Tuesday. My name is Miriam Masaba. I want to thank everyone, including Asunta, Brian, and Timo, and another Brian elsewhere, for making this production a success. Also, Hilary, a big thank you to you, Faith, Yvonne, and the rest of the crew. Well, don't go anywhere because the buzz is up next. Good night and God bless you. Thank you.